Hi, my name is Wesley, otherwise known as HeyW, and I'm a freelance 3D artist and animator. This is part 5 of my series on making an animated short from scratch, and in this video I'll be covering creating some textures, setting up all the materials, as well as lighting the scene. I created the sky dome and directional light, but I'll be covering environment and lighting a little bit later. I just want to make a note that this is quick draft lighting just so I have something to see the materials in and that it'll be completely replaced later. Another option in this situation is just to use a dome light with some outdoor HDRI. You also might notice the tree hidden at times. This is just to make the render faster when I don't need to see it. I'll start with the character's hat, as it's currently just a Lambert. I want to replace this with a sprite material using the same setup as I did for the leaves on the roof. And I only have a diffuse texture for this leaf, no specular or anything. So I'll just turn up the roughness some and reduce the reflection weight. As for the character's skin, I turn up the subsurface scattering and I only use one of the layers. So the only thing to really adjust here is the radius. Uh, and this will depend on the scene scale, but basically the larger this value, the more noticeable the subsurface scattering effect is. And you could do a lot more in terms of texturing the character's skin, but after adjusting the color sum, I was happy to call this material done. Now I'm going to create the materials for the terrain. If you're going for a realistic look, there are tons of textures and PBR materials you can download offline. A lot of them are for free. Uh, in this case, I want a little bit of a cartoony look, so I'm going to make some of my own textures from scratch. Now I'm not much of a 2D or texture artist, but with a few simple tricks in Photoshop, you can actually create some pretty convincing textures. So in a new 2K image, I'll paint the whole thing with this leaf brush, which is part of Photoshop's legacy brushes. And I'm just using these different shades of brown to try and create what looks like a dirt base layer. Now obviously I don't want the dirt looking like it's made up of a bunch of leaves, but the trick here is this brush combined with a low flow value gives this really nice splotchy look. Then I'll make a new layer and do the same thing with shades of green to make a base layer for the grass. And I also make some adjustments to the brush settings here to give more color variation. I'll create a third layer and then switch to this grass brush, which is another one of the legacy brushes. Uh, I want to increase the angle jitter to the maximum value and then again just paint this everywhere. Switching back to the leaf brush, I can erase certain parts of the grass layers and doing this I can create little dirt patches here and there. Now you could merge the two grass layers so you only have one layer to erase on, although I like keeping them separate as it gives me a, a little more freedom, where I can erase only the top layer in some areas. I also feel like erasing on both layers separately gives a little more detail. Once I'm finished adding dirt patches, I want to duplicate the dirt layer, then I'll merge the original three layers so I'll have a version of the texture where everything is combined and a version of just the dirt. Now to make these tileable, I'll go to Filter, Other, and Offset. I want to set these numbers to half whatever the resolution of the texture is, which in this case is 1024. Now if I can just get rid of these seams in the middle, I'll have a perfectly tiling texture, which I can pretty easily do in this case with just the auto heal brush. Now I'll do the same for the dirt layer, but I'll do this manually instead of using the offset filter just to show what's happening. So basically what it does is tiles the texture, but to where the seam is in the middle of the frame. And now the edges of the frame are what used to be the middle of the texture, which obviously had no seam. So by removing the seam in the middle, you've now completely removed all seams. Now I also want to make normal maps from these, which I can do by just going to filter 3D and generate normal map. But going straight into this, even though this is a seamless texture, the normal map generation will assume what's beyond the edge of the texture is just flat, and so you'll get this subtle seam where it repeats. The workaround for this is to simply increase the canvas size and then tile the texture to fill this in. Now from this, generate the normal map, and then you can crop back into the original size and you'll have a perfectly tiling normal map with no seam. Now I'll drag and drop all these textures into the hypershade graph. I'm also going to bring in this set of rock textures from CG Bookcase. And each texture comes with its own placement node, but I'll delete some of these and connect multiple textures up to one. That way I can control the tiling from a single node. Which I can quickly do by holding control and middle mouse clicking near the top of the texture placement node, and then dragging and dropping onto the texture I want to connect it to. And lastly, I'll set the color space to raw on all these normal maps, as well as this roughness map. I'll start with the grass, just creating a standard redshift material, plugging in the diffuse, and then making a bump node for the normal map. Now on the bump node, I'll set the map type to tangent space normal, increase the scale, and then enable this flip normal. This will depend on the normal map, some need it, some don't. You can usually tell by lo just looking at the surface, and if the lighting looks off, then this should probably be on. I know in the case of textures generated by Photoshop, this should be on. I'll turn down the reflection weight on the material to get rid of the shine, and then on the placement node, I'll increase the repeat UV to shrink the texture down and tile it. 
Lastly, I'll add a color correct node after the diffuse texture just to adjust it some. I'll then follow the exact same steps, creating the same setup for the dirt textures. Lastly, for the rock material, it's pretty much the same thing. The only difference is I have a roughness map, which I plug into the reflection roughness. Now I want to combine all three of these materials into one terrain material, which I can do by first creating a redshift material blender, assigning it to the terrain, then I'll plug the rock material as the base color, and for now I'll use the grass material as layer 1. So I can blend between the two with this blend color, but I want the grass to be visible where the terrain's more flat and the rock where it's more vertical. So I need to get the surface normal in world space, which in redshift can be done with the state node. So here I want to plug the out normals Y channel into the blend color, but I want to have some control over it. So I'll plug this into a remap value node first and then plug the out color of this into the blend color. And now by adjusting this ramp, I can control how much rock or grass shows and also how soft or sharp to make the transition. And just to add some variation, I'll create a max on noise texture and combine this with the out normal using an add node. Now I want to be able to see it directly so I know how to adjust it. Once I have it connected up and it's part of the shader, I can select the noise node and then in the render view enable isolate selected and it'll show just the noise. So now I can easily adjust the settings. I'd also like to mention adding the noise in this way only affects the transition from grass to rock. So you don't have to worry about getting patches of rock where it's completely flat or patches of grass that are near vertical. Now I want to incorporate the dirt material. I'll create another blend material and plug the grass in as the base and then the dirt as layer 1. I'll then plug this into layer 1 of the other material blender, replacing the existing connection. So with this setup, I can blend between the grass and dirt material while leaving the rocky areas the same. And the point of all this is to allow me to use the 3D paint tool to paint where I want there to be dirt versus grass. But you'll see if I switch the tool immediately, the attribute to paint to is empty. This is because the tool needs you to select some attribute of the material to paint to, for example, the color channel, although it doesn't recognize redshift materials. The workaround for this is similar to what I showed in another video when creating the leaf materials for the house. The first step is to plug in the material into the surface shader in the redshift section of the shading group, and then create a Lambert and plug this into the original surface shader port. And with this setup, Redshift still renders the terrain material, but the viewport renders this Lambert. This also allows me to go to the 3D Paint tool and select the Lambert's color channel to paint to. I'll click Assign Edit Textures and generate a 2K JPEG, which should be good in this case. And then I'll take this newly generated texture and plug it into the blend color of the Grass and Dirt Material Blender. Then I'll flood the whole thing black, which is to say make it all grass, and now wherever I paint white will show up as dirt. Just remember to click save textures for it to actually update in the render view. So now I just want to paint around the house, a dirt path where he'd likely walk a lot. I kind of scrub through the animation to help guide where I should paint. I also try out some different stamps to try and make the uh, border look a little more natural. Now back in Photoshop, I want to make a texture for tall grass. Now there's a lot of techniques you could use depending on what style and quality you're going for. I'm just going to go with one of the easiest, which starts with the same legacy grass brush from before. I'll scale it up and then adjust the settings to take out all the variation. Then I'll just click a bunch of times to create a single blade of grass. I'll then copy this and just paste it a bunch of times for each one's translating and warping it some. And in like two minutes, I have a nice clump of grass. Now back in my scene, I'll create a plane with one subdivision in both directions. This is for my grass and I'll eventually want to add displacement for it to flow in the wind and the subdivision will help with that. I'll duplicate it and then rotate it 90 degrees and then combine these together. And then as for the material, I'll just use a Lambert with the grass texture I made. Next, I'll create a mesh network with this object and set the distribution type to geometry. But I don't want to use a whole mountain as I only want the tall grass to grow roughly in the same areas where the grass material shows. Now there's a couple options for achieving this. The method I go with, first I have to duplicate the terrain, then I'll solo it and open up the selection constraint window. Then after switching to face selection mode, I can use the orientation options to only be able to select faces that are more horizontal, just like how the material works. So after playing with the setting sum and getting the selection I want, I'll invert it, delete the faces, and make this the input mesh for my mesh network distribution. I'll increase the count until it looks nice and full, and then I'll add a random node to mix up the transform sum. 
Now I want to set up the shading for this. I'll leave the Lambert as is for the viewport material, but I want to set up a sprite material to plug into the Redshift surface shader port of the shading group to be what's actually rendered. And as for this material, I'll plug the grass texture into the stencil image, but I don't need to plug it into the base material itself as the only thing important about this texture is the alpha channel. And this leaves the color channel of the base redshift material free, so I can recolor it to whatever I want, and this will be important for the next step. Which is to create a color node on the mesh network so I can vary up the color of the grass a little bit. And this works by creating a color set on the output geometry. So to actually render this, I'll create a vertex color node, which I'll plug into the color channel of the grass material. I'll also plug this into the translucency color and turn up the weight to 1. And now I can adjust the settings on this color node until I get some nice varied greens. I also want to get rid of the grass over the dirt path I painted earlier, so I'll add a visibility node and then plug the texture I painted into the strength map. I'll need to invert this and then create a map helper and roughly align it with the dirt path. Now with the set finished, I'm ready to set up the environment and lighting, and I've mentioned dome lights and HDRIs a few times, which I won't be using here. They definitely have their use, especially for more realistic stuff, but to me, oftentimes the lighting looks kind of flat, and you also don't get too much control. It's a personal preference thing, but in these situations, I like to make my own environments from scratch. I'll start by creating just a normal sphere. This will be the environment dome, so I'll scale it up to something pretty large, reverse the normals, and then in the render stats, disable cast and receive shadows, so this doesn't interact with the lighting. I'll then assign this an incandescent material, and then for this to actually affect the environment, I need to go to the render settings and enable GI. I'm gonna set the primary engine to radiance cache. You could turn on secondary GI as well. It'll just increase your render time some. I'll then create a redshift physical light, set it to directional, and adjust the rotation and intensity some. And I've mentioned this in previous parts, but I'm rendering an ACES color space, so if you're rendering an sRGB, the intensity values that look correct will be a little different. I'll increase the shadow softness a little, and then I want to shift focus back to the sky dome. I'll create a ramp texture and plug this into the sky dome materials color, and this will control how the sky looks. And you can of course adjust this to look however it looks good to you. Generally though you have darker more saturated blues towards the top and lighter less saturated blues towards the horizon. I also find setting the ramps interpolation to exponential down to look the best. One other thing to play with is the intensity multiplier on the incandescent material itself. Now from here I'm ready to move on but you'll see I'll continue to tweak this from time to time. On hiding the tree the shaded area is a little too dark. So I'll create a physical light, scale it up, and move it away some. Then obviously I need to turn the intensity way down, and this creates a nice fill light to brighten up the shadows. I also tint it orange some, just to warm everything up. Next, I want to focus on some shot-specific lighting. For starters, the shots of the apple. I want to add a highlight to it so it stands out a little more. So I'll create a redshift physical light, and position it pointed at the apple, kind of like a rim light. And I only want this affecting the apple and not the leaves or anything else, which I can do by going to relationship editors and opening up the light linker. And now from the left panel, I can select the light. And on the right panel, I can add or remove objects or entire shading groups. So I'll remove everything and then select just the apple shading group. Now I'll just do a quick before and after render. You can see the apple sticks out a lot more, but the rest of the scene is left alone. As far as other lighting, I create another fill light for under the tree, but key it to only be visible when the character's there, as the point of this light and the way it's positioned is to highlight the character when he's under the tree. And having it visible in the early wide shots when there's nothing there, it looks kind of off having the extra lighting under the tree like that. And lastly, I add an orangish light to the inside of a shack, just so it's not completely dark in there. Now the scene's looking pretty nice, and you could technically call it done and render at this point, although I still have some things I want to add to it. But this concludes part 5. I hope you found this useful. Thank you for watching, and feel free to subscribe to the NVIDIA Studio YouTube channel for more videos like this.